What is up, Posse people? Frank here, and you're watching the Super Posse Show. We're back, guys. Season 2, coming at ya. Man, it is good to be back. So I was uh, driving home from work yesterday, right? And off in the distance, I saw this giant, beautiful American flag just billowing in the wind, right? And I just looked at it. Locked eyes with it, because flags have eyes, if you didn't know. And I was just instilled with this sense of pride and patriotism, unlike anything I've ever felt before. Which brings me to the main point of this video. So apparently, America is such a great country that we can just reappropriate Eastern culture as we please. If you don't know what I'm talking about, then you haven't seen that new movie, Ghost in the Shell, based on the 1995 Japanese anime. Now before we get into this, let's just cover some things real quick. So, 1995 anime, it's what the new movie was based off of, right? The main character, the major, her birth name is Matoko Kusanagi. Now, I know what you're probably thinking. Well, Frank, uh, that doesn't sound like a very American name. Well, guess what? That's because it's not. Just, just, just bear with me. Follow me here. Follow me here. So, flash forward to 2017. We've got the new Ghost in the Shell. Now, if you watch the trailer, you might notice something interesting. The leading role is played by none other than Scarlett Johansson. Because, you know... If I'm looking to cast a female Asian lead, then the first person I'm going to think of is Scarlett Johansson, because she's probably the most Asian person they possibly could have picked in all of Hollywood. But wait, it gets better. So, if you watch the movie closely, you'll notice subtle CGI and makeup around Scarlett Johansson's eyes to make them look slightly more Asian. Is this racist? I think so. Does Hollywood care? You bet your ass they don't. Now before you guys go all crazy saying things like, Whoa, whoa, Frank, chill out, man. I thought this was a super posy show, not the super negative show. I'll give you that. You're right. Which leads me to my next point. Despite the fact that I went into this movie with mixed emotions, to put it lightly, I actually left pretty pleased. Now I know what you guys are thinking. Um, Frank, uh, this movie got a 42% on Rotten Tomatoes. Surely it's garbage. See, that's kind of what I expected going into it, because let's be honest, Hollywood doesn't have the best track record when it comes to taking Eastern pop culture and making it into Western movies. <coughs> Dragon Ball. <coughs> but honestly, I really don't get what made those critics score the movie so low? Full disclosure, I may 100% be blinded by my nostalgia because, like I said, I did love the original. And maybe it's dulled my senses to the significant shortcomings that this movie apparently is fraught with. But I just can't bring myself to think so little of this movie. Visually, it's a stunning movie. I saw it in a Dolby Digital Auditorium at this AMC by my house, and... Good golly gosh, I was blown away. Second, despite the racial controversy that I mentioned earlier, the cast was actually pretty diverse. And the casting, aside from Scarlett Johansson, was done pretty well, if I say so myself. The biggest pitfall of this movie, though, is by far the story. You can tell by watching the movie that they try to cater this more to a Western audience. They spent a lot more time focusing on the backstory of the Major, building this relationship with her, so you can better understand the character and empathize with her. This is something I did appreciate, because it's not something they really dove very deep into in the original, so I kind of like that change a lot. However, there was a lot of political commentary in the original film that I feel is part of what made it such a rich experience that didn't translate into this movie at all, if we're being honest. I mean, it was completely absent from the finished product. And I think that might be what the critics are getting at in their reviews, because I can definitely see where, after watching the original, you could feel a little bit unfulfilled watching the reboot, just because 
it's very pretty. There are a lot of bells and whistles, but you can't really just slap a bunch of pretty on there to cover up the fact that the storyline is kind of empty. Personally, I think if you're a fan, definitely go see the movie. You're going to enjoy it. Some of the most iconic scenes make it into the film almost shot for shot, so all your favorite awesome moments in the movie translated pretty much entirely into the new one. Even if you've never heard of Ghost in the Shell before or you're not a fan of the original, still go see the movie. I feel like there's enough here that when you leave you won't feel like you wasted your money, but I do want to reiterate that this isn't an award-winning film by any means. It's not something that you're going to go into and just come out with profound changes in your world and life views. It is not that kind of movie. It's not that kind of movie, so just don't have unrealistic expectations. All in all, I would give this movie 3.5 frank heads out of 5. Go see it just once and form your own opinions. Don't let review sites like Rotten Tomatoes completely ruin a potentially enjoyable experience for you. That's all I really have to say about the film, but the great thing about these videos is that it's not just about my opinion. I want to hear from you guys too. If you saw the film, let me know in the comments down below what you thought. If you haven't seen the film yet, let me know if you're planning on seeing it. I want to hear from you guys. Well, that's all I got for you guys today. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, if you had a good time, feel free to give it a thumbs up. And also, if you're new, hit that subscribe button. I'm working on content as often as I can, trying to bring you at least one new video every week. Sometimes if I have some extra time, I'll throw a bonus one in there. Like this week, I'm actually hard at work on the follow-up to this video, so keep your eyes peeled on my channel because I have a feeling there's going to be another really interesting video coming real soon. Thanks again, guys. My name is Frank Teleska, and as always, stay posy. I'll catch y'all later.